Excuse me, miss. Uh, what's that you're listening to? Well, it's a podcast. It's all about this couple from England who are in a lifestyle, and they talk about their adventures. So is uh, that child-friendly, then, is it? No. <laughs> they say lots of naughty things, and they swear a lot. But would you like to listen? Get in the gym or to your car Without advice you could go far We fuck things up and we make mistakes we talk about our sexy dates It's getting hard for this to rhyme Just as well cause it's bed hopping time Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 52 of the Bed Hoppers podcast. Over there, on the sofa, fully clothed, drinking coffee is... Mrs H. And I am... <laughs> Mr H. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, although now I wish I was unclothed and not drinking coffee. Really? Yeah, it sounds way more fun. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's quite warm, actually. It's a little bit warm for coffee. Uh, but So we should just take our clothes off. Yes, we should definitely do that. Absolutely. And we'll be back in about uh, <laughs> six and a half that minutes. That the best episode ever. <laughs> Woo, woo, woo. Even hotter now. I know, right? The sweat is dripping off me. <laughs> That's kind of a horrible image, really, isn't it? No, uh, it's, it's fine. Anyway, welcome back. We are. Um, so, <laughs> you, are you all right there? I'm fine. <laughs> okay, it's a bit of a mad one, this one, isn't it? I have it? this enduring image then of uh, suddenly taking clothes off and drinking wine and then everything being really hot. <laughs> what, like, sexy what? or just really warm? Yeah. This is like a midweek madness. <laughs> I think we are on midweek madness. Yeah. <laughs> I, kind of, I can barely say it. We are a little bit rusty because we haven't really properly recorded for a fair few weeks now. And that's because Mrs. H's father hasn't been very well. However, he's still hanging in there. He is. Life awesome. finds a way. Absolutely. In the words of the great Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. And he's um, great. He's doing okay. Mm -hmm. he's... You mean Jeff Goldblum? Or... Well, I assume so. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum appears on everything at the moment. Actually, I think he is doing pretty well. We we saw him recently on some kind of cool YouTube clip and he looked amazing. He always looks amazing. He's Jeff Goldblum. I know. He's just awesome. I think he walks a very fine line, though. I know what you mean. He's He's just a little bit out there. And then if it was anyone else but him, you'd think, what the hell is happening? You'd think creepy uncle. Yeah. You? You, you really would think creepy yeah. uncle, I think. Yeah. But because it's the gold bloom. He gets away with it. He does does get away yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, he really does. Anyway, so good things are uh, that your Jeff Goldblum. You're get... <laughs> talking about your father, dear. Well, yes, I know, but I need uh, a minute now to did, think about Jeff Goldblum. Did you want a bit of how's your father? <laughs> so your father's doing okay. Yes, Minor yes. improvements, I guess, is the, the best way of putting it. I Not... would say no worse and some slow incremental improvement. Like me learning to read. <laughs> like yeah, I haven't that. regressed. Yeah, I still haven't passed comics. So maybe the reason we are literally so crazy this week is because we're just finding a new normal again. Yeah, I think normal isn't really a word that's ever applied <laughs> no. to us. But particularly at the moment, we're still trying to find out what normal looks like. And as we said last week or last episode, we're yeah. just putting yeah. the feelers out and see how seeing how life goes, I think. It's kind of... Uh, nice. I mean, it's good to feel something, but it's kind of <laughs> nice to feel something akin to maybe a bit of humour again. But I, I can't wait to get out and feel some other people again. <laughs> I mean, oh, you're God, all right yeah. and all. But... It's been a real joy spell for you. <laughs> you must be twitching now. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not twitching because you know I'm, I'm still you know servicing your needs on a yeah. you know. But this is a really good test of um, you know, the lifestyle generally. Could you ever leave it and just go back to just me? Yes, I could. So Most this has been a good a good test. Well, we have, to be fair, we have had a couple of minor adventures along the way. Well, yeah. So we have... Mini adventures. Mini adventures, a little bit of fun here and there. <laughs> and we've had a couple of nice social meets. Yes, of course we have. We've, we've tried to fit in some nice, uh, lighter kind of fun things just to make everything a bit like, normal again. Yeah, normal for us. Absolutely. But it did make me think, um, I wonder how easy it would be now to drop the lifestyle and just revert to what we had before. I think we could do it. I think we wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. And I would suggest that even just our lifestyle friends have made this whole thing so much easier or easier to mm. bear. And everyone's been universally fantastic. They've been checking in. We've had almost daily messages from people checking in to see if we're all right, check that you're okay. Yeah. You've done pretty well. You've had some presents. <laughs> and, 
Anne, we're coming up to your birthday. I'd forgotten. Absolutely, with all the chaos going on, I'd completely forgotten. So in September, you turn, what, yeah. 70 or something? Oh, shut up. I feel like I'm going to turn 70, yeah. <laughs> but you look like you're turning 28. Oh, good grief. Well, I'm turning a respectable age. Okay. <laughs> I'm still younger than you, though, after all these years. Yes, all right. <laughs> Bragging over there. <laughs> well, we do have some exciting news. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, sorry, my exciting news this week has mainly been around Pokemon, so... Really? Yeah. What, let's get out of the way. What happened that was exciting in Pokemon? Oh, you really want to know? No, I don't, but I'm pretending <laughs> that I do. Okay. Well, this week in Pokemon, that seriously, you wanted to know, and now you're pretending to be asleep. <laughs> Be a narcoleptic Pokemon ball. Uh, sorry. Are you being Snorlax? <laughs> Seriously. Poor Lax, maybe. You know that Snorlax has a special move, which is yawn, right? Which is what? Yawn. Really? Yeah. Yawn. 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 As in a yawn. As That's in a, a yawn. special move. <laughs> it's a weird word, a yawn, isn't it? <laughs> it is now. You said it like five times. It's like when you see how blue is spelled. <laughs> I know what you mean. Some words you sort of say so many times and then you think, how is this a word? Blue, blue, just... blue, 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 Although blue, this blue. week, did you not mock me for my observation that it would be weird to have multiple limbs like a dog? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. You were literally sat in bed and Yoko jumped up on, yeah. on the bed and you said, wouldn't it be weird to have four legs? How it... does she manage having four limbs right. was your next phrase. I... It would literally render me incapable. Yes, but you have... Two arms and two legs. You I know, but I don't walk on all of them. You, you can crawl on them. In fact, I've known, <laughs> known you to be on your knees quite a lot of the time, to be fair. <laughs> but I'm constantly amazed that the dog manages to navigate all her limbs so successfully. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed that Yoko is able to navigate anything, frankly. <laughs> but I'm even more amazed that your head hasn't fallen off with all those strange thoughts that have been bubbling around in it. <laughs> oh, darling, what is our amazing news? Our amazing news <laughs> is that we are going to podcast a palooza. Oh, okay. Miami Beach. Also known as PCAP. In Miami Beach. Yeah. Well, Miami. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. I, I don't like think it's saying, Miami Beach. Miami Beach makes me feel like I'm playing um, Grand Theft Auto. You never played Grand Theft Auto. Yes, I have. No, no. At one point. Oh, that was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better not say the, the, the word associated with your little noise because she'll pipe up and start doing things. You mean that Amazon... Yeah. Prime sponsored. Your your wench sponsored by Amazon. <laughs> or listening computer that. He likes to that. switch all the lights on and off you. Yeah. Sometimes when she feels like it. Mm, I'm not going to mention her name. You don't mention it. She gets very jealous if I if I mention her name. And Literally, it'd be like command. Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> Except you only have to say her name once. She's all listening and all powerful and controls much of our house. She really is. I'm quite scared of her now. <laughs> mm, she is. So we're going to Miami. We're going for the 15th to the 18th of May, and this is like a hotel or boutique hotel takeover. Yeah. With a bunch of other podcasters, bloggers. Who's going? Okay, let me... This is a memory test. This is like when I have to name your Transformers. Yeah. Am I going to get this right? No. Sludge? Swoop? Wait, no. The, are these the podcaster <laughs> names? Oh, they are now. <laughs> <laughs> Which the one? irony is I'm going to remember all your Dinobots now. <laughs> well, you could probably remember all the Dinobots, but whether you could remember any of the other podcasters. Snarl? No, that's that's not what they're called. Oh. Oh, wait. No, the actual podcasters. Yes. Right, okay. Um, I I think I know all of them. <laughs> okay, go on then. Let's let's see. These oh, people may or may God. not be going. We reserve the right to not be correct. We got a thing. Bing. <laughs> this isn't fair. I don't have a list in front of me. I do. Bed hoppers suck. Obviously. We cut. We don't count. Yes, we do. No, because we we don't have enough fingers. <laughs> oh God! All right, sex interrupted. Bing. Did I actually get that right? Yes. Fuck me, that's amazing. Um, average swingers? Bing! Oh my goodness. And I genuinely don't have a list right now. This is from memory. Okay, go on then. Um, swinging down under. Bing! <laughs> oh God. Um, pressure's really on there, isn't it? <clears throat> Can I have a clue? Yes. They're all part of that. That little app that's for the event oh, that you've been great. signed into for the last couple of days. No, no, I haven't. Um, come on, it's your turn to talk now. <laughs> oh, you want me to go through the list, do you? Okay. This so, is a big list. I've had a really trying week. <laughs> <laughs> so the people what are going uh, are Swinger Diaries, mm. Sex Uninterrupted, We Got a Thing, Yes, Sex Because, 
Oh. Swinging Down Under. There's lots of sex in his title. <laughs> Casual Swingers. And Swingers. <laughs> Sapphic Swingers. Yeah. Average Swingers. Okay. Monogamous Marriage. Monogamous <laughs> Marriage. <laughs> I can't even say it. That sounds like a really exciting menu item. <laughs> Dinosaur Swingers. <laughs> yeah, and us. Oh. One of those may not have been true. Yeah, I think you made one up. Did did you did you see the clue? Uh, the dinosaurs. It's the one I couldn't say. Oh, okay. Not really. That really exists. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're fucking with me now. What's what's going on? What is happening? <laughs> I made up dinosaur swingers. I knew you did, but you were looking at me like, mm, she's going to totally fall for this. I know you were. <laughs> and I genuinely, for a minute, was thinking. That's such a cool name. I'm, we should have told. We should have called ourselves the Dinosaur Swingers. I nearly <laughs> said it as the the Drop Bear Swingers were. <laughs> oh fuck you! No. <laughs> <laughs> so who's sponsoring the event? Um, Double Date Nation. <laughs> oh my god, this is like a real memory test. What are you doing Correct. to me? Yes, and what is Double Date Nation? Uh, I think it's might be a new, a new fancy shiny kind of site that you can go and look for like-minded people yeah that's pretty much the summary it? yeah considering right, i've had like a real long 10 hour day here and you're just springing this on me right now and you make it well. sound like i haven't had a long 10 hour day here. i know right i've had a very long day and i've had to put up with this <laughs> at the end of it i made you tea you're so lucky i know right <laughs> i sorted shit out i'm doing well yes you did exactly <clears throat> so now you've put me on the spot and tested my memory mm-hmm and watch me fail miserably. <laughs> you did not fail mis- miserably. Did you did pretty, pretty well. good. You did all right. Thank you. For, you know, for... You're going to say what, for an old woman that was no, no, I wasn't going to say anything. Uh, I was going to say something else, but I'm not going to say what it is. What were you going to say? It was probably offensive, so I'm going to stay well away from it. Hmm. Mm. Anyway, um, Double Date Nation, we're going to have a look at this evening, aren't we? Because it's actually available in the UK. Ooh, and there's some. Are you gonna burst into song then? Fan dangle discount code you can have for like yeah, three think, months free. Yeah, I think it's on Twitter, but I'm not yes, 100 percent sure off the top of my head what that code is. See, I remember that. Yeah, you, well, you remember a bloody discount, <laughs> don't you? Of course you do. Always out for a bargain. Everyone loves a bargain. Bargain. I love a good day. Are bargains. <laughs> so um, the other thing that I need to address is that apparently I'm sounding more and more like Obi Wan Kenobi when I talk. You literally went straight into Obi Wan Kenobi. Then I didn't sound you like Obi Wan Kenobi. You just went in dry, no lube or anything. <laughs> These aren't the droids you're looking for. They're for sale if you want them. See, it's just too easy. Well, that was a little bit too Ewan McGregor voice. Mm. It wasn't quite Alec Guinnessy enough. I quite like the Ewan McGregor one though. Really? Yeah. Is that because you quite like Ewan McGregor? Maybe. Maybe. Actually, I don't like him that much. Really? I hope he's not listening. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Hi, Obi-Wan. if you are. <laughs> Quite liked your work in train spotting. Did you? He's got a brother. Do you know this? Right. <clears throat> and his brother. Obi Wan Kenobi or Ewan McGregor? Ewan McGregor. I don't know if Obi Wan Kenobi has a brother or not. Uh, we may find out at some point. This could be a massive plot spoiler for Star Wars. No, this isn't. This so this is oh, a okay. Ewan McGregor fact. Right. What, what go I, on. Right. I like a fact. He has a brother. Is he also called McGregor? Yes, but <laughs> he. I th- believe he is a pilot in the forces. And his um, call sign is OB2. Shut up. It's true. Really? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> I love that. Do you? Was that, yeah. was that a good fact? That was a pretty good fact. You, you seem incredibly cheered up by that fact. Yeah, that's great. Okay, there we go. So <laughs> next week on New and McGregor Facts. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So there we go. Wow. There we go. Right, we can we can end the show now. We've we've delivered some facts. Mind blowing. Yeah, we've we've said where we're going. Anyway, we, what we would like people to do is to join us in Miami and for more you and McGregor. For more facts you for we, and impressions. Well, the, the scary thing is, scary but exciting is that we are presenting a um, panel thing. Oh, um, grief! <laughs> which is going to be amazing. It's going to be a hot mess, isn't it? Well, it's, an hour of you and McGregor facts is going to be amazing. <laughs> are you just going to do an hour of Obi Wan? Kenobi impression. Yes, I am, basically. And I'm going to name all the Dinobots. Oh, good. Yes. Well, I, I have some cunning plans for what, what we... Is it naked Transformer pictures? No. I'm thinking that we, we should and could do a live erotic reading. What now? Yes. <laughs> a live, never before seen this document, Mm-mm. Mrs. H, genuine on stage in front of 400 people, live erotic 
reading right. or something. Uh huh. Yeah. You think people would enjoy that? I would. I it, I don't care whether anyone else. Is. But if you think we should make this happen, please let us know. Uh, write in, tweet us, and all that sort of shizzle. <clears throat> because I think this could be fucking amazing. Right. Uh, and what kind of response are you hoping to elicit here, darling? Are you hoping to elicit some kind of mass hysteria where people can't stop laughing, or are you thinking that people will be secretly like really turned on? Little column A, <laughs> little column B. Subtle combination of both. All of the columns together so, in one columny smorgasbord. Right. Okay, cool. Mm. So we like some kind of hilarious, uh, comedic people falling about laughing and then all having sex. Yes. That's kind of like our sex life, right? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty <laughs> much. It's it's generally the way most of our eating Generally, humour and sex. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. I, I, you know. So you can come along and see us do some stuff. And be part of the panel and things. <laughs> and other podcasters, what have we already mentioned and not yeah. whatnot, will mm-hmm. also be doing their stuff as well. Yeah. And there's parties and... They're probably way more professional than this. Themes <laughs> and... Well, I, to be honest, I think everyone brings something different to the table. And we will bring universally what is Bedhoppers to Miami <laughs> and um, stand there and in mm. weird silence. I am super excited to meet people. Good. I, you are super excited to meet people. Yeah. I am very excited to meet people. And mm. there's an app. And the fact is, I've got another social media platform on which I can talk to people. <laughs> I like how you had to navigate me through the app. Yes. I did have to sign up with you. Yes. Mm. I'm special. You are. Very, but very special. It. Cool. So, anyway, please join us. Yes. Um, we'll give some links out on Twitter and we'll put them on our site. So, if you want to sign up, come along. Um and come to Miami and hang around with us and How some other cool people. How many glow in the dark filthy towels are you planning to get by then? I don't think you can get glow in the dark towels. It's very niche, right? It's very, very, very niche. <laughs> it would be a good cum rag though, a glow in the dark towel. Can you imagine that? It comes with a free black light. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing you want with with one of those. So um, yeah, come and join us in Miami. Uh, that's mm. what we're up to then. What else have we got coming up? So we are going to Ireland. Oh, we Literally. are going to the land of Guinness and Irish stew. Okay. Mm. Not not Irish people, then. Irish stew? I thought you were going to go with some like lame Irish joke, like Irish stew in the name of law. What, what do you mean? Well, obviously, like, I, I arrest you. Mm. Irish stew. What? what? <laughs> What's this? <laughs> well, you've made my lame joke even lamer now. <laughs> I don't... What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic Irish joke. Irish stew in the name of the law. Are you being racist again? No, it's a joke. You, this... Everyone knows this joke. Really? I guarantee it. Really? I heard this joke loads when I was at school. Did you? Mm. No. Never heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is actually better than your Ewan McGregor fact. No, I don't think it is. <laughs> no, I, I have really. heard this joke before, of course. Stop winding me up. Seriously. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, so we're going to Ireland. Uh, we're going to Dublin. Yeah. And we're doing that on what, Friday, Saturday, something like that. Catch yeah, next some week. Fun people should be nice. I am so excited to meet these people. Are you so excited to meet them? I'm literally buzzing. Good. Yeah. You are literally buzzing. Uh, not well, not literally, obviously. Uh, did you leave something inside you? <laughs> I'm just. How strong super was that coffee? To have some fun after what has been biblically shit month. It has been a bit biblically biblically shit. shit. And it'd be so, 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 so nice to actually have a little bit of fun Mm. and just treat ourselves a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like life is starting to get back to um, a little bit of normality now and we can allow ourselves that. Yeah, I think so. And these people are lovely. Plus, it's a nice trial run for when we go away in November. (laughs) (laughs) This is very true. It's a good means of testing everything. Mm, yeah. Which would be good. Testing everything? Yeah. What are your, your parts? Not, not like my parts. In case parts. they don't work anymore. No, I, I think they work pretty well. <laughs> it's just more a case of um, making sure that the house doesn't burn down when we're gone. Oh, and okay. that pets and p- parents mm. and teens remain life alive. Life continues. Yeah, life right, okay. again finds a way. So you're fairly sure your parts will still work? I fucking hope so. <laughs> All right. All right? Yeah. Cool. So, what is this episode about, apart from 20 minutes of us rambling on? Uh, I've actually forgotten. No, I haven't. Wait. Um, we are reviewing Ab Fabs. What's Ab Fabs? It's a club. Is it? Mm. Where is it? 
It's uh, near Heathrow in London. Why is this a question? Because everything you're saying to me, I have no idea what's coming next. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what's coming next. So all that pre-show discussion that we had. We never have pre-show discussion. We, we did. You sit there and feverishly write away and like gather some things together and I just potter around tidying up and then sit down when you tell me to. Piffle. This it's is, untrue. It's this all is true facts. Anyways, the point of this one is that we're going to do it in two different bits. First bit is all about the club. Okay. And what we thought of the club, what we know of the club. Yep. The second bit is all about, and that's probably going to be a lot shorter. The, the experience The experience we had. we had at the club. Fair. So, and I think we'll talk a bit mm. about what we thought of the club, whether we felt it was value for money and the experience and all that sort of stuff and where we think, where we think they can make some improvements. And then we'll tell you a little bit about our evening there. Sure. I'm I'm already geared up to um, actually talk about one of the funniest parts of that, that night. Are you? Mm. Are you ready to talk about that? Uh, and I'm talking about the club itself, not the experience. Okay. Mm. Fine. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously we've got like highlights and, you know, things that we didn't like quite so much. Mm, that's true. Yeah. So a little bit of background on our okay. clubs. So during the day, it's a... Um, nature spa called Kestrels. Yes. Now, it has been going for quite a while, mm-hmm. but it's loca- it's a new location. So they've recently bought a gym and taken it over, haven't they? Or, or yeah. have settled in a gym. Yes, but they have. prior to that, it was actually shut down. Yeah, <laughs> it was beset with some problems, I believe. Yeah, I believe so. It got shut down at the start of 2018, and that was after 10 years of running. It was very popular, wasn't it? Was, it was very popular. It was, and we didn't yeah. ever get a chance to go there. But. We kept meaning to, and people spoke very highly of it, didn't they? And mm. they were sort of, oh, you should totally go and try it. It's awesome. And then by the time we finally got our shit together, it shut down. So I did a little bit of research. Ooh. A little bit of research. Okay. And uh, according to The Sun... <laughs> the well, sun. Yes. Which, some quality research. Some then. quality research. <laughs> according to The Sun, it was closed down because the court decided it was illegally built on residential land. Yeah. So that so, wouldn't have gone down well with neighbours then. No, so they got shut down in 2016, I think originally, or 2013 thereabouts. Mm. Um, but then had a sort of reprieve and a bit of a... Uh, they tried to go back to court and solve some of these mm. issues. But ultimately the place was um, was forced to shut because of where they built it. Yeah. So it's back. Hooray! In slightly different location. Different location. But still relatively in the same kind of area, right? Yeah, it's kind so, of near Heathrow. So if you're staying in a hotel near Heathrow, yeah. you're, you're not going to be far, far mm. from it. But also there is a hotel literally within spitting distance of it. Yeah, you, you, you couldn't get any closer. No, you literally couldn't. You go out <laughs> of the hotel and... And it's there. And it's there. <laughs> so that, that was quite helpful. So we went there with some friends <laughs> who had never been to a club before. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Yeah. But we decided to go check it out, give it a review and see what it was like. Now, the first thing is, is that if you're going to go there, you need to have a membership card or need to set up your membership. The mm-hmm. membership is £10 each, I believe. Yeah, so there's a bit of pre-work that you need to do to, before you make the trip. Yeah, so it's worth signing onto the site, logging in, and um, you can fill out a Word document and send it to them or email it to them or whatever. Mm-hmm. This will help you a lot <laughs> when you get there. Because otherwise you have to go on some dinky little machines that they've got in the background and kind of type all your crap in. And it. It's just a palaver. Although, to be fair, at least they do have facility to do that. They do, but we had prepared. Oh, we were very prepared. Our friends? Not so. so much. <laughs> so rather than going straight through, which we would have done, yeah, we had to wait around for 20 minutes while they faffed around, put in yeah. the details, trying to sort it out and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So that was a bit of a pain. Yeah. But painless if you prepped. Totally. So definitely our top tip is to, if you're going to go there, fill in the membership stuff and send it over. It was all very easy. They needed a couple of forms of ID. It was all and fine. Everyone. Got there. Mm. Fantastic. They give you some towels. They give you a locker key, all that kind of stuff with a deposit, I think, don't they? I thought that check-in process, yes, was very good. Yeah, very good. Nice holding area as well. There's like a holding pen that you, you can sort holding of... Pen. Yeah, but, it, <laughs> but often you're just straight into the club and there's no space. But this had a, a proper little area where they could sort all this shit out while other people could go in and out. So if you've already got your membership, yeah. it's a piece of piss. Very professional. Yeah, very professional. Now, the costs on the night, I think we paid £50 on the night we for did. the two of us. Um, if you go on a Friday night... When single guys are allowed, I think that's the the balance, or, mm. or more single guys are allowed, um, then it's thirty quid. Cool. 
So not a bad cost. Not at all, considering now, it's kind of near London as well. It is. The, the one thing I will say is that it doesn't have uh, any rooms on site. No, but a hotel literally next door. Yeah. So, so but there, that is obviously an extra cost that you need to mm-hmm. keep in mind. So if you are going there, um, you won't be able to stay on campus, but you can literally stay like mm-hmm. a minute away. That's like... But that does add to the cost of your, your stay, as you say. Yes. Because it's not the sort of place you could literally just pop in no. and drive home again. Frugal swingers. <laughs> well, you could pop in if you lived at Heathrow. Yeah. Yeah, you or could. Or like Staines or something. But I think a lot of people tend to travel and stay, don't they? Yeah. So that's as far as we could work out. So they gave us a bit of a tour when we got in. We had quite a thorough tour, I think. Quite a thorough tour. Now, the tour didn't really have much in the way of rules. Oh, no, that was quite lacking. So there wasn't a lot of that at all. Um, And it's interesting because some of the much smaller places we've been, which you would actually think wouldn't be quite so, you know, hot on rules, were much better place to give you the sort of talk around consent and no means no and boundaries. And we didn't get any of that, did we? No. So we had that at Purple Mumba, I think. A bit of that. And we had it at VA and a few other places. And Townhouse. Yeah. This place was didn't mention the, the rules in that regard no. at all. In fact, they didn't really mention any rules about how things worked in the club as they took you around. No, it's kind of implied in a way, wasn't it? Well, By the fact that you're in this club, I think they're assuming that you're adults and you'll behave. Well, I think there's a bit of that. but I, And I don't know whether it was just the person that showed us around. Mm. But it felt very much of, this is where this is, this is where that is, that yeah. is where this is. Bye, on you go. Yep. <laughs> and I almost expected at the end of that tour, a very much a... And these are the three rules that you need to abide by, or this this is where you'll find X, Y, Z. Didn't get that. Nope. So for me, that was a bit of a, hmm. We didn't have a problem in the club at all on that front, and people seemed very respectful, but at the same point, that wasn't highlighted. And I don't remember seeing a lot of signage around, or any signage at all mentioning respect and... I don't recall seeing any signage at all. No. So that, that did sort of play into the tour for me. Um, the other thing I didn't notice lying around with condoms or lube. Absolutely. Stuck out like a sore thumb for me. Especially in a place we, like yeah. that, you would expect them to be just, you know, in bowls or on tables or just accessible. I mean, there was only one place in that club I saw them on a little side table. One. Did you? Yeah. I, didn't, I don't remember seeing them at all. So. But in a place that size, to only have them in one small area... Now, I will say, this place is friggin' huge. Oh, it's enormous. Compared to some of the other places that we've been to, it is a full-on leisure centre that has been mm. converted into a swingers club. Now, that brings with it some challenges, as we found out, and we'll go into some of that stuff. But actually, there weren't, as far as I could see, any pots of condoms, any lube, or anything like that that was just mm. around. Yeah, I did only see one, but I was specifically looking to see if I could see them anyway. So maybe I just looked really, really hard to find them. You looked really... It was like, where's Waldo or where's Wally or whatever we want to call it. You it's had in to... the fridge. No. So it it's does... in the cupboard. <laughs> it does have a bar on site. Yes, very small one. Tiny little yeah. t- tiny little bar um, in what I assume used to be a cloakroom or something or a kitchen. Um, yeah, really small. For a place that size, and I appreciate it's not built to have a bar necessarily, but you'd think they'd make a little bit more use of space that they did have. To yeah. have a slightly bigger bar. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, to be fair, though, we got served relatively quickly. Yeah, we did. They were very friendly, very They're nice. Very helpful. Um, they answered any questions we had. Prices were pretty good for drinks. Yeah, prices were okay. Yeah. Um, they also put out a buffet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's like a whole little, um, what well, I guess what would have been like a little restaurant area. And they mm. laid out a, a sort of um, meat and cheeses finger buffet. Finger buffet. <laughs> Which people flocked to. Seriously, you knew when that thing was open because there was a queue. Yeah, yeah. I remember there was a lady sat there like for a good hour. <laughs> Just noshing down food yeah, she was. and nothing else. <laughs> it was quite interesting though because um, where, the, where that is, um, I, I, I get the sense it's where parents would have stood and watched their kids go swimming because underneath that is actually the pool. <laughs> Was there a viewing gallery? <laughs> it's a viewing gallery, yeah. Actually, I didn't it is, go, yeah. I think it's I didn't frosted up a bit, thing, but you, so. if you stood on tiptoes, you could look over the side, past oh, the, okay. past the uh, I don't know, the salami slices or whatever it was, and look into the pool. Wait, is that the in pool. the pool area now or in the buffet? <laughs> in the buffet area, looking over into the pool. I mean, all it's right. all glassed up, but it is yeah. like a little viewing sure. viewing thing. If you think like a, like 80s, 90s leisure centre, you'll mm. get the sort of the vibe that, 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 that it gives. It's obviously it's done to a nice standard everywhere. Nothing looked terrible no. or awful, but it 
does carry with it the weight of being an old gym yeah. or an old sports place. Yes, it had that kind of vibe going through it, didn't it? Mm. You couldn't shake the feeling that, oh, yeah, that used to be a dance studio. Cool. That obviously used to be um, a room where they'd have classes of some sort. And well, it, it felt quite like that. There was a lot of that around around the place. Mm. So we'll try and talk you through some of the different areas. I don't know that we'll remember all of the rooms, but as we came in, I remember yeah. there were some couple of downstairs sort of playrooms, one of which was like a sort of BDSM light room vaguely remember with a those. chair maybe in it or something like that and there were some changing rooms now the changing rooms oh very amazing well they were amazing because they were literally the changing uh, yeah. rooms that you get at a swimming pool which were awesome mm. downstairs there's a full-on bloody swimming pool as well yeah huge so it's got it's got like a like a whole big yeah. sized pool and like a little sparry sort of area that you could mill around in if you wanted to yeah that it, was awesome facilities really. it was a nice temperature mm. it was it was a little bit I tell you what it reminded me of. You know, you get like horror films. <laughs> oh God! Um, you know, like where like the kids are swimming at night, mm. and it, you've got that sort eerie of green glow, eerie kind of. glow, and a reflection of light. It wasn't horrible. No, it was quite pleasant. It was warm, and people were friendly, and that was all nice. Mm. But it, it just that was in the back of my head. Yeah, no, I've I get just that. watched too many horror films. Where and I think partly because we went in it right at the end of the night, and it was quite quiet. Yeah, by was, that point, people would. I think if loads of people were in there thrashing around and doing their thing, <laughs> it might not have the same ethereal quality yeah that's might, true yeah i think it's because it was quiet and then all the water was quite still mm. and yeah it was odd wasn't but it, it was quite nice because we you could just sort of tug around a bit in there huh? <laughs> and drag drag your wife around on the drag water your wife around. yeah and then you could get out and lay on one of the side things and yeah there were like little seating bits yeah. around the side so that was the pool mm-hmm. now as you sort of come up the stairs there was on on the left i recall the the sort of what used to be a dance studio but it was now like a bdsm yeah, studio with yeah. a few sort of bits of equipment in there but it still very much felt like a dance studio yeah like a pilates class was going to happen in there or something. so much so because it was quite quiet on the night mm-hmm. that we went or at least it actually that's, that's the, probably not true there were probably quite a lot of people and because of the size it very felt very out. quiet and it was mm-hmm. very spread out so i was the only person in that studio so I was doing some pirouettes and some, nice. some leaps. Did you do some core work? And yeah, I did. Yeah. But, but it was more dance. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I practiced my flash dance manoeuvres. I was part of the cool brats, all that sort of stuff. Amazing. Yeah. It was, it was, you don't even like flash dance. You berate I was, me I was all a the Billy time. Elliot. <laughs> Were you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so there was that. Then as you go further, further in, you come into this big sort of open area, which has kind of got lots, quite a bit of seating. Oh, the huge social bit. Yeah. With lots of settees. That was actually okay because the music wasn't too loud. You could sit down, you could have a chat. Yeah. What we did find is that people didn't really come and talk to you very much. No. Again, it was people awkwardly perched around, kind of just like eyeing up the lie of the land kind of thing. Mm, and there was a lot of Observing that. what was happening. So you had to literally go to people and engage with them if you wanted to talk to them. Yeah, definitely you didn't have that. Because it was so spaced out, I did find that people sort of mm. sat there and then they stayed there. So you physically had to get up and move, yeah, 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 obviously, yeah. To, to, to reach people. But it felt like a journey. <laughs> it was like, you know, you'd get the one ring and shuffle it over to Mordor. <laughs> but in this area, there's also a bar. So the little bar that we mentioned was there. Yep. And then there was a sort of little odd, what used to be, I guess, sauna rooms, little sheds. That had been turned into miniature playrooms. Yeah, they were like very obviously ex saunas because they were wooden um, with little glass uh, windows in there and stuff. So they were quite sort of almost like Swedish log cabin type vibes to them, weren't they? Yeah, but it was quite inventive. I quite like that. I like the little use of those. Playrooms, which is kind of cool. And then behind that, there was a dark room and also a glory hole. Yeah, so really big, wasn't it? This place. It was. It was. It was ginormous. Mm. And that's just one bit of it. Then there was another bit. Uh, a bit further on that had which was clearly another dance studio a gigantic oh felt huge. like a school disco sized hall that was crazy it literally was like a school disco and that that was yeah. the disco area well i use the term disco lightly the dancing <laughs> area i suppose but we went into the room as a, as a foursome and we opened this door and there were just two people dancing in there so one was on a pole down the end and one oh. woman was literally in the middle of the floor just dancing, dancing on her own yeah and it was the most surreal experience. And there were chairs sort of lining the sides, mm. very much like a school disco. <laughs> yeah. But there weren't really very many people. There was one or two people dotted and mm-hmm. sat on the chairs. But it was just like empty. Yeah. And you'd need a ton of people in there 
to 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 make bring it, it to life, to make it feel jump, like it's yeah. yeah. You really would. You're absolutely right. And again, no condoms or anything like that on the side. No. It was very. I mean, it was a dancing area, so I suppose you know you don't necessarily expect action there. There were <laughs> flashing lights, but I, I, it was just felt a little bit strange. Quite a lot of um, mirrors towards the end as well, where obviously it had been a dance studio. But, you know, again, that could have been quite fun, um, given that they were using that for um, a nice, happy sort of dance area. So the, the mirrors could have been a really good, fun bit. Mm. But it just wasn't enough people in there. No, or indeed anyone, really. <laughs> yeah. Then opposite that, there was a cinema room. Oh, my goodness. Can I describe the cinema room? Well, let me describe the cinema room first, <laughs> because I think you're, you're you're being a little bit unfair on it, and I shall tell you why. I am why. not. You'll I'll, tell me for why. I'll tell you for why. Let me elucidate. <laughs> so, this cinema room, again, it's a big room. I have a screen right at the front, and it's got little sort of beanbaggy chairs all the way through, about five or six rows of it, I think, maybe yep. four or five. Now, first thing I noticed is the sound was coming from the projector and not from the front of the screen. Oh, I love you. You're so funny. It, it's weird. I like to have the sound coming from the front. I don't like the sound. You're so cute. But it, it's disturbing. I love that you go to a fuck club and the first thing you notice about the sex room is the sound quality is not to your liking. The sound was... The quality was like, okay, <laughs> if it's coming from a projector, fine. But it was... Because it's behind you, <laughs> you, it just you just hear the sound behind you. That's not right. It's not natural. This I tell is putting you, putting me off my stride. <laughs> this is a crime against hearing How nature. How on earth can I maintain an erection with this poor sound quality? Exactly. If it's not Dolby up, so I'm not really that bothered. <laughs> so there was that, and when we got in there, and this is why you were so aghast as it one. It aghast. was rammed with people. But it's not the main reason I was and aghast. it smelled entirely. Of come, part one. It hit me in the face. Like, <laughs> the not even hit you in the face. The smell was overwhelming when I opened that door. Mm-hmm. It was like opening an oven door, which you normally would be met with a waft of, I don't know, nice bread or something, or something cooking. But no, fucking smell of come right in the face. Boom. <laughs> Boom, right in the kisser. That was Blam. not, not right pleasant. Kisser. Like an overwhelming bleach and, ugh, no. So, the other thing is, is that this is where (laughs) most people had gathered. Because it's the only average-sized room with things for you to sit on and play in. So, I think everyone just goes there as a default because it's... And then gets down to it. And then gets down to it. And it's it's not... I mean, it's a pretty big room, but it it had quite a lot of people in it. And clearly, a lot. it was seeing a lot of action. And it just... Had that hot, sweaty... Sensory overload. Yeah. Semen smell in the air. It was disgusting. It was and everything I despise and worry that is stereotypically what I don't like about a sex club. You mean the sounds at the back, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, coupled with the dire sound quality. Yes, that's much better. <laughs> but the, that's the bit I don't like, the, the overwhelming feeling that actually I'm in a club where people are there to have sex. And whilst I appreciate I am in that environment and I've put myself in it because I want to do something, maybe, mm-hmm. I don't want to be reminded of the more sordid qualities that sometimes these clubs exhibit. I think it just felt a bit free for all. Yeah, like, and it that's could not have your... felt a little bit nicer. It could have felt nicer. Yeah. To be fair, though, I, I can see why it was such a busy room. I can see why it was the <laughs> was the way it was because it's the only big dark area where everyone can bundle together, really. And there you go. It that, that just it's just yeah. going to happen like that. It just reminded me of the end of Tusk. With all the like heaving sea lions up and down, and <laughs> oh my goodness, I was just so desperate to get out of that room. Mm. It, it everything was just sensory overload. It was hideous. It was just, it just didn't feel great. No, I and I appreciate some people may like that because you know that that kind of whole atmosphere of this thriving kind of group orgy vibe. Some people may love that, and each to his own. But we've but seen that done much better. I have to be seen fair. it done better. And I think if you have the set the right scene in the right atmosphere, mm. to be fair, I think um, Le Boudoir do that pretty well. With their sort of um, big group room, big group mm. room, whether it's sort of like uh, curtains and things all around, and it has this sort of um, Moroccan style feel to it a bit. Yeah, no, I, I I think you're right. I think it was just that that room was just too much. Yeah. Okay. Mm. 
So that was pretty much the club. Yeah. Pretty much. I think for me, because it's so big, it needed a tremendous amount of people in it to fill it. Mm. Now, my concern would be is if you're going to fill it with that many people, there's not enough play areas <laughs> for you to actually play in. And there's not enough private areas for you to do that. Yeah. So if if you chucked a ton of people in to make it seem busier, or if you managed to pull in a ton of people, it would probably be Give too the busy. Way it, and, yeah, yeah. And, it, and you'd be like, oh, it's too too busy. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. It, it then it is a little bit that way with it. But it, actually, on the night, and, and now I, there was there must have been a couple of hundred people in there. Easy. Do you think so? I think See, so. See, I couldn't get an, uh, a feel for the numbers at all because it was so big. But they, the thing is, they could have been anywhere. You could have there was sort of three or four people in each of the. Little mm. huts. There were people in the swimming pool. There were people. So Three hundred people in that one swimming room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly that. There was a good thirty so people in there, mm. and it, as a result, it felt it felt empty for the most part. Especially if you were in the social areas, and we were chatting with our friends for a bit. And in fact, she went off to try and find other people. Yeah, which she did. Would be part of the story in a minute. <laughs> but actually, it was difficult. There, were, there weren't enough people to to, to, the, to, to come hand, back with. To, to, you no, know, and there wasn't it wasn't a huge selection to sort of pick and choose from in terms of chatting to people either, let alone people you were interested in. Yeah, no, I agree. So my 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 thought was actually it was nice enough set up. I liked the facilities. Mm. It was a bit too quiet for 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 even me. <laughs> but then I get the sense that if it was busy, it's probably so rammed that I won't like it. <laughs> so it's Stuck a fine a rock and hard place. Yeah, it's a fine balance on this place. Yeah, I think in terms I of agree. that, I thought the staff were very good. I didn't like the lack of condoms and the lack of lube and all that sort and of stuff. The around. Lack of and the lack of talk at the beginning. Yeah, or even like a level of posters and reminders and all that mm. sort of stuff. That it doesn't take a lot, but I think that's important to have there. Now, I know they do a load of different nights, though. So they do uh, they do by nights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not not for a by night amount of time. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Suited. Yeah, well. thanks. Um, they do uh, couples. They do single guy nights. They do BDSM nights. All sorts of different things, I mm-hmm. think. So there is a wide variety of things. You'd think, though, being at Heathrow, they're at a fairly prime location to getting a fairly big draw well yeah it's quite transient isn't it with you know people sort of going to Heathrow anyway and thinking oh, I'll just go there on the way or yeah I, and I think the other thing there is though it is quite new in terms of that location so and people didn't know that it reopened or certain people didn't know that yeah it, it takes a while for word, word of mouth to get around and for people to know it's back up and running I think mm-hmm. I think I would go there again overall interesting I would but only if we were going there with people that we knew Absolutely. So if we you were wouldn't meeting, just rock up on your own. No, with me. if we were meeting a group there, I would say, great, it's got plenty of facilities. Yeah. There's enough space for you to find your own level of privacy. There's enough little playrooms for you to go off and do lots of different things. And that's great. And you could have a dance off. You could have your pool. Old school rules. Well, yeah, there's enough space. Because <laughs> it's so freaking big. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole space for a school disco in there if you want. <laughs> Um, I think would would I go back by myself or by ourselves, not just by myself? That would be a bit weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> Completely against our rules. But would we go back by ourselves? I would say probably not. I wouldn't. Um, it wasn't it 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 wasn't nice enough in terms of it didn't feel luxurious enough in the sort of VA mm. way. It didn't have enough sort of variety in terms of the um, different sort of rooms. So there weren't like the indoor dogging room that that other place has got, or the oh, yeah. you know like the double bed or the bunk bedroom that even townhouse had so it didn't have any sort of redeeming quality that you would think i'm going back for that yeah there wasn't Mm. any novelty factor other than these little sauna rooms which i liked Mm. but they just felt like little boxy rooms i'm surprised you liked them actually because there was quite a lot of visibility and you don't necessarily like i think some of them had curtains i think did they yeah so the glory hole thing Mm. not really my no my bag although there was a humorous moment in there which is quite funny (laughs) because <laughs> when we went in it was so quiet that that that, that no that made me laugh I, yeah well he and i went one side and you two girls went the other and, and hilarity prevailed hilarity prevailed <laughs> with a with you girls going Shh, let's swap and us swapping at the same time because we could hear you because you're about as subtle as bricks but oh i didn't know that you'd actually swap because we swapped yeah of course you did 
Because it, it was funny. Imagine my surprise when I got the same member. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I recognise this. Oh, it's... Uh-oh, okay. <laughs> you were going to say my name then, weren't no. you? Yes, you were. I was not yes. never. No, not Mrs. me. Mrs. H. Mm-hmm. You were going to say my name. Nope. Yep. Nope. Definitely. <laughs> Guilty as judge. I did not say it, though. No, you did not. No, he who shall not be named. Yes, fine. So we... <laughs> I think... In terms of the other bits that, that, that struck me in the club, I thought the swimming facility type bit was quite nice, or the pool area was quite good. Despite I liked it that. sort of I yeah. liked it. I liked it. Apart from it reminding me of a bit of a horror film. Yep. Slight in the background. <laughs> um in terms of the people that we met, um we met a few well, we spoke to quite a few people. We did put ourselves out there, but there just wasn't a huge mix or variety of people. So no. there wasn't really anyone that I was interested in. No. If I'm being really I honest. I would agree. And, and I know we're fussy. Uh, incredibly so. Mm-hmm. But at the same point, then you you know, you know only want to play with the people that you want to play with. Of course. Um, so for me, it needed more people in there. And it goes back to that dichotomy of how many is too many, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Um, the bar facilities were cool. They were fine. And the closeness to the hotel was fine. They were adequate. I thought in terms of cost, it wasn't too bad overall. It's certainly cheaper than going to Le Boudoir for us. Yeah. Um, but you still have to have a relatively expensive hotel next door yes that's true and i mean it's, it's not a, it's not a cheap cheap hotel is it it's, it's not yeah it is c- possible for us to drive there and back in a, in in one day but it would be a long old drive and i suspect it wouldn't be you that was doing that driving <laughs> so and for that reason i'm not inclined to to, to make it a, for that reason i'm out <laughs> yeah for that reason i'm out so yeah overall i guess i give it a Five and a half, six out of ten, I think. I was going to say, how many abs out of five would you give it? Well, <laughs> yeah, five and a half, I think, to six. Um, I think there's some room for improvements. I would, personally, I would probably get rid of that pointless disco or halve it and then turn it into two different sort of medium-sized playrooms. Mm, you could do so much more. I yeah, think. and maybe it's just their first step in this journey and that there's more they're going to do. Yeah. Um, I really hope that's the case because... Just, but there's some simple things they could do in the meantime, like bowls of condoms, yeah. put some, make the talk a bit more about the, the process or what's acceptable. Put an air rules. freshener in that cinema room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, an air freshener in the Pipe cinema some, room. I don't know, Cinnabon to it or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the food and stuff that they did there, that was, you know, neither here nor there, really. It was. I didn't have it. You, you didn't. Well, you had a little bite, but that was about the limit of it, really, wasn't it? I, I don't Do you talk about the glory hole again. <laughs> a little bite. <laughs> How very kind of you, dear. <laughs> so, uh, you know, overall, I would say if you're in the area, check it out. Yeah. Go and have a look. I think it's p- perfectly possible to have a really good night there. Mm-hmm. And I think if you're going with friends, especially, you'll probably have a good a good time. I think it needs to probably be a little bit busier. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. Yeah. What, what would you say? Anything to add to that? So. When I initially got there, I was, I really was quite optimistic and, uh, because I, I thought the facilities impressed me from the off, really. We got up there and I thought, oh, this is actually much nicer than I was expecting. Had no pre expectations and I hadn't even looked at any gallery pictures on their side. No. So I went with an open mind and I was pleasantly surprised with how well kept they were and what a great venue generally it was. So mm. I was hopeful. However, that hope was very quickly replaced by a kind of um, uh, slightly underwhelmed. It's a bit meh. Yeah. Isn't it? It's Yeah, I was underwhelmed, I think. And I was hoping for a bit more based on how good the venue should have been. So I just felt it was a little bit, um, I was just a little bit ambivalent. You know, as part of Generation X, you feel neither highs nor lows. <laughs> I think, and I think this, yeah. This was kind of almost the sum right. of that. It, it has potential but it's it not awful there. but it never quite mm-hmm. does anything great that it, and it's nice enough the one th- i was very impressed with reception in terms yeah, of the way really they handled was. us and the way they got us through and they that were really process nice staff. and they were good staff and they were good to talk to and yeah. were, all that was fine i just think i it, just feel it needs something to set it apart a little bit it almost needs a bit of a um like a makeover like a i know it's had already yeah. a makeover but a level of investment. That said, I guess they've not long got the property. They've not long, sure. you know, done done what they can to get it into that space yeah. and stuff. Anyway, uh, that's absolutely fine. But my worry would be is that very quickly it's going to fade it becomes and, date, mediocre. and it becomes just a gym that's got some swingers in it. And that, <laughs> that, that doesn't sound like any fun. 
I mean, you know, if I'm going to go to a gym with swingers in it, I might as well go to Desire, really, frankly. <laughs> it's a large upgrade, but it's one I'm prepared to take. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that. Um, well, we went there with a couple of friends. <laughs> we did. We did. We did. We did. And it was their first club visit. <laughs> yes. Oh, bless them. So they, well, I think they were both excited, but she was oh, my super excited. Yep. That's fair. <laughs> super, super excited. However, off the scale excited. Well, however, <laughs> getting there was a bit of an issue for them, wasn't it? Oh my god! Yeah, it, it was like a perfect storm of everything that could go wrong went wrong on the journey. <laughs> so we we met them in Windsor. We thought, well, we'll go to Windsor, have something <laughs> yeah. to eat, and uh, go to a nice little place and get a bite, and then we'll go out to this club. Actually, we went to this fantastic little um, drinks place. Oh, it was this awesome. little bar. It was, it it was, was a great. champagne bar. It was, it was awesome. I loved that. The name of which eludes me, but anyway, it was it cool. <laughs> but we met them for, for about two, but they were late for that. Yes, they were. It, this is almost reminding me of Chandamur episode, well, you know, it, where it, everything it, was conspiring to produce uh, an outcome of uh, <laughs> um, dire consequences. Well, <laughs> and I think this, you know, we, we've kind of learned that lesson that, that if you're pissed off, do not... Come Don't in take it with you. Yeah, no. And start necking one, which is pretty much what started happening. <laughs> he was annoyed because he was driving oh, and all this sort of stuff. And she was annoyed was because she, he she was annoyed with her. Because he was annoyed yeah. with her. And it ultimately ended in them drinking quite a bit of drink. Yeah, it was like, give me well, a drink. <laughs> well, starting to have a couple of drinks. And then we, we, we drove to the hotel. They yeah, got lost. They got lost, yeah. And then they were late. Oh, and then even later. he needed another drink. And then they were late getting... And, all this stuff stacked up <laughs> and they just kept knocking back the drinks. Yeah, because it was just, as I said, a hot mess of everything being late and rushed and they weren't in the best mindset by that point. Like Chandamuff. Well, very much like Chandamuff. And we actually, were thankfully not in that mindset and we were quite level-headed. And I think because we were used to going to a few clubs now, I think we were kind of, we knew what to roughly what to expect and we knew part of what the process might be. So we had a level of... We've been to a few places. We've got this under a belt. We're yeah, okay. Yeah, and we weren't running late. We were fine. It was all good. So we get, we get into the club and then on top of this issue, <laughs> they've not filled in their forms and sent them through. So, you know, this happens and there's there was a problem with the hotel room as well. Oh, yeah. All this kind of stuff. Um, and it all stacked up. And I think when, when, when they got into the club, she was so excited. I think in her head. She thought she was going to get like a 20 person gangbang going within about six and a half minutes. Yeah, I think, I think her expectations are very heightened. And <laughs> they would, she was dialed up to the max. And when we got in the club and there weren't that many people in there, <laughs> I think she tried to salvage the night a bit too much. I think in her head, she, she'd shelled out all this wedge to get into this club. First club experience as well. Yeah. Uh, and when that wasn't happening, I think she, she felt, compelled to go and find enough entertainment to make it worth her while. So we end up sat in this little social area for a bit. <laughs> and she's ping-ponging over there, oh, yeah. trying to talk to everybody in the club to see if anyone's interested in playing. Mm. And literally, she's sending couples back to us to talk to that I mean... we've not spoken to or had anything to do with and, quite frankly, didn't fancy. It was like a holding pen. She'd send them back sit them down and then she'd like spiral off into the distance again and find some more people and leave them with us so we could start talking to them. And some of them <laughs> weren't even English speaking people. <laughs> so she sent over one couple and she'd sort of vaguely translated something for them. <laughs> and then they come and sat down next to them and, and she's like, ah, oh, Mr. H, you'll be great at talking to them. <laughs> and then fucks off and leaves me with basically doing sign language and, you know, is it a book, movie, or a TV oh, show type so communication? Which is fine. So eventually, that you know, the, this, these couples have got bored of listening to me talk about nothing. Because um, she just pissed off again. Because she pissed off to find the next person and went through about 10 different couples. Yeah. Very, very strange. But she was far too excited about the whole thing. And she was also very drunk. And, well, that was the next sentence, really. Yeah. Exceedingly drunk by this point. Yeah, I mean, I think by this time it was it was quite funny. We were the reverse in, in any, if anything, we were getting to a point where we were starting to wind it down because we knew we could see that the the, the end of the night was 
kind of on the horizon. Yeah, I think so. We so. were almost sort of like, let's just call it, let's go back. Well, we, we wanted to call it at about to hotel. half 11, 12 o'clock. Yeah, we wanted so to call he. it. And, and he did as well, or it was at least getting towards that yeah. way. But she insisted that we stay until the exact calling time. Oh, my goodness. Until they kicked us out of the pool at like gone half two, three. Two, three <laughs> o'clock in the morning. So we trudgingly made our way back to the hotel, which mm. was like a minute's journey once we got changed or whatever. <laughs> And after all these these awesome, <laughs> sexy promises all night, she was too drunk and then went straight to bed. Night. But doesn't even remember it. <laughs> and did, didn't even remember it. I think he lost the will to live at that point. I Yeah, I thought he was going to flip a table. I didn't think she was going to make it through the night <laughs> at that point. Oh, I felt so sorry for him. <laughs> I did as well. So we get back to our room and it's, what, three in the morning? Yeah. So what do we do? We may have Skyped some really nice people. Yeah. Well, I think we had some sexy times first. Well, yeah. Obviously. Yeah, it'd be rude not to, really. Yes. But then we Skyped some sexy people. I know. On the other side of the planet, who just happened to be up because it was because three in the, the morning. Because yeah. were on our side, and we were up super late, and for them it was like a normal time. So. A way to salvage the night. So, actually, I had a really fun end of night, in a way. It's possible I may we... have been streaking in the back of that video. <laughs> so, we kind of... Bought it back, didn't we? We and, did. It and was made a fun, it our own. Yeah, we did take it back. I think it was a shame that it got to that point. Really, we should have... Because we would like to have called it earlier, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, we should have stuck to our guns and said, okay, we're not having a great night. But we wanted to be there for our friends and make sure they had yeah, a, no, as good I a night as that. possible. Um, but really, when, when you've supped with that many drinks and you've <laughs> kind of gone down that road, it was never going to end well for them, I don't think. Oh, darling, we've all been there. Oh, I've <laughs> been there. I, I'm aware of this situation... <laughs> I'm very, very aware. <laughs> but for once, we were relatively all right in, in fairly good nick, weren't we? We, 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 we hadn't in... drunk loads. We were fairly sensible. We'd already kind of like sensed that the night should be ending. So we were kind of slowing down and we drinking anyway. Yeah, I think so. And I think we'd kind of um, really stopped. And we could even switched to water at one point or tonic. Yeah, I think um, I was just drinking tonic water by the end of it. Which is, which is absolutely fine. Next day, however, <laughs> it's the way she wandered over and said... <laughs> Oh, Mr. H, did we have sex last night? Oh, oh my God, the look on his face when she said that. And then he described to her the night as he saw it. Oh. And... I don't think I'd ever heard such uh, a tirade of uh, sarcastic abuse it, over a, a coffee and a Danish. It was, it was quite, hilarious. Yeah, it was, it was, unfortunately for her, absolutely friggin' hilarious. <laughs> so, hilariously, that we then get in the car or on the drive, <laughs> drive home after saying goodbye to them. All very nice and friendly between us. And they're behind us in the car, aren't they? Yeah. And we start getting 101 messages of apology through. <laughs> while he's literally tearing her a new one in the car. On the long journey home, he was relaying to her in graphic detail what should have happened in graphic detail, but didn't. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> I think he, uh, he, he definitely had, um, been let down <laughs> i think so it's difficult because you should never put these expectations on yourself oh, i know but, but I, when you're looking forward to something so much and i think they really were and they, they had high hopes for the club being a great experience i think it was just a culmination of all those other factors and the fact that the club wasn't really full of enough interesting people yeah i think yeah. yeah it was um <laughs> yeah it was an interesting one i think she had some delusion of putting everyone together for a mass orgy involving <laughs> us and stuff and I, that that clearly didn't or wasn't going to happen on that Absolutely. night so um and i think for us it's we've definitely learned that lesson or at least a little bit in mm. in terms of chandamath which is not to get pissed off and chuck loads of drink down you <laughs> but also it's that kind of managing your own expectations for the night in terms of what you expect and actually knowing when to just not flog a dead horse and just call it a night and go make your own entertainment well, because I, you can still salvage a night i think absolutely and i think we should what we should have done is we should have stuck to our guns and said right okay you guys if you want to stay here you can stay mm. here uh, we're gonna head back and just have some fun and though we did manage to salvage it with the with the skype call and the, which the is awesome. yeah which is really good fun it it shouldn't have had to come to that and it's I, interesting though because you can really easily get bent out of shape over your expectations for night mm. and what you kind of what you put into it you hope to get out don't you yeah so i suppose if you're shelling out a fair amount of money for a weekend, you know, the hotel, the entry fee, the membership. You almost, you you almost feel like I'm owed this. I'm owed a good night. Mm. So you do get a little bent out of shape when it doesn't happen. And I think that's where it went. 
Yeah, <laughs> I, I I agree. Oh, one thing we haven't mentioned is what we're watching. Oh my god, we're watching a very classic uh, John Carpenter film. Yes, The Thing. John Carpenter's The, the thing. thing. Not John Carpenter's Thing, which I think is a different thing. That's a very different film. Yeah. I, I don't you think could I, probably download it. I don't, I, would, I don't think I want to download that. <laughs> One of his Ooh. finest, maybe, would you say? Oh, yeah, this is a classic film. It's an amazing film. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, it still grosses me out. Really? Oh, yeah. It's What amazes me is how much younger Kurt Russell looks. He has a fine beard. He always has a fine beard. Fine head of hair in this film. (laughs) Um, Actually, it's a little, for me, he's a little bit reminiscent of um, Stranger Things, uh, Hopper in Stranger Things. You think? A little. The way he's kind of like striding around and being all purposeful and yeah. (laughs) He's got a little bit of a vibe for me. Really? Yeah. You, You like a bit of Hopper as well, do you? Do you know what? actually really quite i know he's a little bit out of shape in stranger things mm. and he's got a little bit of gut on him but there's something about him really yeah okay well if you'd like Only to tell us about bit. your strange crush <laughs> please write in and tell I us i have some really strange crushes you know this well i'll tell you what so matt berry's one but <laughs> <laughs> yes i hear you clem fandango <laughs> <laughs> i love that man Father! <laughs> So, so Matt Berry, strange cross. Jermaine Louis, Clement. Louis Theroux a little bit? Ooh, a little bit of Louis Theroux, that yeah. man. Jermaine Clement. Oh, yeah. Anyone else we should know about? Well, you know, since you're bringing them all out there now, there are a few. Uh, obviously, Jack Black. Yeah. You know, Tenacious D. Goldblum. Oh, the Goldblum, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, love Benedict Cumberbatch's voice. Mm-hmm. Actually don't want to see his face. Sorry <laughs> if you're listening, Cumberbatch. Um, but your voice is amazing. Okay. And really love um, Patrick Stewart's voice as well. Oh, Benedict Cumberbatch with his smile voice. <laughs> yes. Smile. Oh my God. Get right. some bass on that. Literally the nice. Oh, you have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. And Patrick Stewart. Oh, he's got a wonderful voice. Hey, and they Star Trek soon. Yes, so exciting. And it's going to be good. It really hope, is. Better be. No pressure, Picard. Mm. Better knock it out of the park. Um, so there's a few. There's a few. So, well, we, we've we shared Mrs. H's. Oh, well, maybe wi- Gordon Ramsay, actually, since I can chuck another one in there. Uh, can you? I'm, I'm doing it. All right, Tossing fine. him into the ring. <laughs> That's some <laughs> ten-man gangbang you've got Gordon going. Gordon Ramsay into the ring. Into the ring with Jack Black for some strange reason. <laughs> um, well, you know, Ramsay's a bit arrogant, isn't he? Oh, you think? I like that. Yeah, I know you do. I like the arrogance. Really? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Why don't you marry me then? You can have a touch of arrogance about you. You think? A little There's bit. There's no ego about me at all. Oh, really? <laughs> he says, on his own show. <laughs> Welcome to Mr. H presents the Bed Hoffers. Well, I mean, we've merely touched the surface of my strange crush You list. wish they would touch your surface. Oh, my goodness. Um, so we've, we've barely scratched the surface. Oh, good. Well, we'll investigate this in more detail at some point soon. <laughs> But if you have a strange crush, get in touch. I'd love about it. to know who it is. I love strange crushes. So weird, strange crushes, particularly if they're British. We want to hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. Your strange celebrity crush. Mm-hmm. And if it's me, I'm okay with that. Well, we can explore yours. My crushes. Mm. I don't really have many strange celebrity crushes. I'm so cracky with my bangs. You leave the Deschanel out of this. See, you knew it. Zoe Deschanel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a complicated man, but I'm interested in actually. I'm no quite... one should have eyes that big. What? The same. It's oh. like a constantly startled Bambi. Did you hear me attacking Jack Black? You did not. <laughs> How could you? The man's a legend. I know, that's true. He's too See? awesome. He rocks too hard. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> Anyways, I think this mm. pretty much wraps up the episode. Yes. Anything to add? Sorry, I was thinking a bit about Goldblum and um, my other list of people. And your other list of people. Other they list don't of even people. have names anymore. They're just a list. <laughs> They're just numbers to me now. <laughs> just numbers, darling. Numbers. So uh, coming up stuff, as we said, we're going mm. to Ireland soon. Yes, we we'll are. Put, put it on fab. So, you know, if you're in Dublin, say hello. Um, <laughs> that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Well, mostly the Saturday, I think we've got. Saturday day, I think we're relatively free. Yeah, we're quite free. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been to Dublin before. Yeah. So we're quite 
you know, happy to entertain ourselves, but it'd be really lovely to meet people if yeah. there are people what be an island that day and want to see us. Yeah, so we can do that. Mm. Uh, we've got uh, November coming up yeah. rapidly. My birthday. Your birthdays as well coming up. I'm so excited for all my Pokemon presents. I don't think you've got any Pokemon presents. Really? Well, this is an oversight, surely. I think you might have a Pokemon present. Yes. I think. Maybe. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, what's the address of Amazon again? I just need to <laughs> just need to have a quick look on something online. Just, just, just so yeah, birthdays, trips, yeah, uh, continuing to figure out what normal is. Um, five and a half star review out of ten for Abfab slash Kestrels. Mm-hmm. Anything you want to add? No, I think that nicely wraps everything up. Oh, I love wrapping up. Yeah, yeah. Go on then, do your thing, wife. Well, thank you for hopping into our bed. In the gym or in your car, with our advice you could go far. We fuck things up and make mistakes. And talk about our sexy dates. Are you part of Lonely Island or something? <laughs> Well, I was thinking about what changing... What is happening? I don't know. It, came, it popped into my head. I kind of like one and it's tricky version of bed hopping time. <laughs> Are you going to learn to break dance as well? What do you mean learn? I can already break dance. You've been keeping the secret all these years from me. No. Can no. you do a Napoleon Dynamite dance for me, please? No, because you'll just sploosh right there on the spot. I mean, to be clear, he is not on my weird celebrity crush list. No. No? No. You sure? God, no. No? No. No. A million no's. But he has got some amazing dance moves. Quick question. Who's the sexiest cartoon character for you? Cartoon? Yeah. Do, do I know any cartoon characters? You've watched a lot of cartoons. Though. I do, I have. Yeah. Are any of them sexy? I reckon that I can think of at least one. Can you actually? Yeah, I can. What, a cartoon, a funny cartoon or what, like Batman? What? Well, he's animated. Is he kind of sexy, is he? I've never really thought about it. No? No. Shall I give you a clue? Please. That's like Robin Hood. Who is a... Um, an archer! (laughs) 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 Oh my god! (laughs) You couldn't make this shit up. (laughs) Yes! Oh my god, Archer! <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> You're too clever for your own good. <laughs>